Hey guys, Arcee here, and welcome to ComputerCraft. This is a mod that allows you to add computers into the game, program them with a scripting language called Lua, and in this tutorial series we're going to learn all about them. Let's start with installing. So, to install ComputerCraft, you would need Minecraft Forge, and then the mod itself. I will give links in the description so you can grab them from there. Those are the latest ones I'm currently using. So, we, what we do is we choose the version that we need. So, we're going to be playing on Minecraft 1.16.5. And then, installer. And then, we're also going to go ahead and download the mod itself. Which is CC Tweaked 1.16.4. It does work for 1.16.5, that's just the name of the file. We'll go ahead and download that, and I already have those downloaded right here. And what you do is you need to make sure you have a version of Minecraft already um, uh, activated. For the version that you are currently trying to play. So, 1.16.5. Go ahead and run that. And once that is up and running, you can go ahead and close it out. And now we can run the installer. You go ahead and install it default to your .minecraft folder. Install client. It has already been downloaded on my side, so I don't have to do this. So now, once it is downloaded, you open up Minecraft. You select your version. Then you go to Installations. Select your version. Edit. And then set your version to Release and then the one that you install. So we're going to go ahead and select that. One thing I do suggest is if you're doing modded, I suggest upping your RAM. So go down and set your Java arguments. This will be 2 by default. Set it to 6. So go ahead and save that. And then play. It will ask, it will say that it has been modified. Go ahead and ignore that. And then play. So now you have a successfully modded game. Yes, it's that easy. You go to mods, you can see you have Minecraft and then Forge. So now we have to install the mod. So what you do is you quit, you exit, and then you go to you go to Minecraft. Go to the installations folder, go to Tutorial, but then click the folder icon. It will bring you into its folder. Now, there should be a folder called Mods. Open that, and then drag CC Tweaked in. And now, you're done. Now, all you do is just run Minecraft. And, as you can see, we now have three mods instead of two. If we open up mods, there it is. You have successfully installed ComputerCraft. Now, to what it does. Hey guys, Arcee here, and welcome back. So, this is ComputerCraft. It adds a whole bunch of peripherals, a whole bunch of devices. As you can see, there's computers, pocket computers, turtles, and robots disk drives and printers, displays, and networking. We're going to go ahead and learn what all of these do in this video. So, first step is we have our computers. We have our normal computer, our advanced computer, and our commands computer. Command computer is basically just like a command block. It can do everything but with code. So, let's start with tier 1 computer. So, we can open it. And then we have a whole new OS called Craft OS. Currently, the version is 
the craft the craft OS version, not my craft version. I am currently running in 1.16.5. So computers can do a whole bunch of things. You can type in programs, and then it has a whole bunch of programs that you can test. These are all programs that are built into the computer. You can also make your own programs by using edit. You type in edit and then a name. So let's type in test. Okay, so these computers use a programming language called Lua. It's a scripting language that is used a lot in these days. There's a whole bunch of games that use it, like CSGO, Gmod, TF2, uh, Roblox has it. There's a whole bunch of them that use this programming language. It's very robust and powerful if you know how to use it. So, we have our normal computer. Our normal computer, um, it, it has a certain limit of data that it can hold, and also it cannot support coloring. So as you can see, it's white. If I go to the advanced computer, it has a gold color. So, I'm gonna go ahead and give you an example. I'm gonna go ahead and set um, term.set text color as colors.red. Oh, I did that wrong. Not supposed to be in parentheses. My bad. So, as you see, it turned gray instead of red. Ignore that. I think a fox just died. So, see? It just turns a grayish color. But if I do it in this computer, term.set text color colors dot red. You can see it actually turns red. And I can type and it's all red. So I'm going to restart the computer by okay, there's a whole bunch of different like keyboard functions you can use, like control T. If you hold that for three seconds or two, I think it is. It terminates your current running program and it goes ahead and resets all of your data. But you see it turns white instead of red that it was. Uh, there's also control R, which is reboot, and then control S, which is shut down. So with these you can do a whole bunch of crazy things. You can make your own programs, you can control lights by using its redstone function. So just for a test, I'm going to go ahead and get a redstone lamp, place it down. And we're going to go ahead and make a quick program. So edit, then we're going to make a program called redstone setter. Now we open up that, and you can see that the redstone lamp, let's go ahead and just place it right there so it's right under. Let's go ahead and, let's just go ahead and do something. So rs.set output, and we need a area. Let's type in bottom, because it's the bottom of the computer. Set the output to true. So if I do that correctly, and then I press control, and then S, and then control, and then E to exit, let's type in redstone setter. And then enter, and as you can see, it turned on. Do all kinds of different things. I believe if I restart the computer, it also resets it. Yep, there it goes. Oh, my bad. Okay. Also, as you can see, never mind, I'm wrong. But yes, all these computers can do multiple different things. Each computer has its own kind of functions and what's the word? Hmm. Capabilities. There you go. Limits. That's what I meant. Limits. So this computer is less powerful than the advanced. The advanced can do more commands and yeah. So, then we have the commands computer, which can do all of this plus do commands. Also, there is a program built into each computer called Lua, which brings you up the Lua Lexer, which is the Lua prompt, you could say. And this is where you can type in any kind of Lua code. So let's type in print, hello, comma, world. And as you can see, it ran hello world, and then it put a one saying it was successful. Okay? There is also a website you can go to that gives you all the info about 
So let me go ahead and go into that, MC Tools and CC Tweet. So this is the uh, wiki of the mod. I will put this in the description and this will teach you how to use everything. Like let's say commands. And as you can see, it has everything to do with the commands API. An API is a basically a table built into the computer. Not a table like you place stuff on, but uh, like coding table, an array, you could say. And you basically put data in there, like functions and everything, and then you can call it anywhere on the computer. That's an API. But as you can see, inside here, there's a whole bunch of things. Like you see list, let's run commands dot list. But as you see, if I press enter, it just returns the function. If you want to run the function, you have to put parentheses. And there we go. Now it's showing all of the commands it can run. I have a lot of mods, so there's a lot of extra commands that's added, so it's kind of taken up the whole screen, as you can see. But there's a whole bunch of things you can do. So this is the normal computers. Okay, let's go ahead and go into the pocket computers which can do the same thing over here, except that they can't out output redstone. And they can't receive redstone. They can do the same exact thing. You can put code in them. And if you use certain devices like peripherals, like over here, the networking, you can put modems on them, which allow them to contact, connect wirelessly to other systems. Also, if you learn the HTTP API, you can go ahead and connect to these devices to real world items. So if you want, you can have it so one of these computers in your game can control an actual light in your room. So these are basically just computers that you can hold in your pocket and then they can run certain codes. If I go ahead and put one in my hand, as you can see, you can see everything on it just like the way how a map looks. I'm pretty sure it uses the same animation for it. But, okay. So now let's go to the turtles. Damn, those foxes are loud. Let's just go and do this. Plus execute at E. Type equals opposite of player. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. As at E run data modify entity at s silent set value to one so now nothing makes sounds let me go ahead and click it yep see if you're done making sound all it does make my hand hitting sound so over here we have our turtles slash robots these also can do everything that these do but these have a new api called turtle which is basically the robot API. If I go ahead and run the Lua command, like I showed you earlier, it opens up the Lua Lexa, and then I can type certain things. So I can type in turtle, and you can see that it pops up. If I type in dot, these are all the functions it can run. But if I try to run turtle dot forward, they need fuel. They run off of burnable fuels, just like a furnace would run. So let's say I put in some coal. So coal, so I put that in, and then turtle.refuel. If I don't put a number inside this parenthesis, it takes it all. So let's just be efficient and just take one. There you go, it took one fuel. Now if we do turtle.get fuel level, you can see that we are currently 80. So one piece of coal takes 80 fuel. Okay. So now I should be able to run the command. So turtle.forward, and as you can see, it moved forward. I can also run turtle.back, and then it will go back to its original position. With these devices, you can see that this one also does the same thing, but it's colored and has more data, all that. But turtles can also receive attachments. If I open up this chest, you can see that there's multiple different kind of turtles. There's a wireless, an ender turtle, 
a mining turtle, a digging turtle, a felling turtle, a melee turtle, a farming turtle, a noisy turtle, and a crafty turtle. These turtles can all be made, the same with the advanced, can all be made with these items right here. A wireless modem, ender modem, pickaxe, shovel, axe, sword, and hoe. But a noisy turtle can be made with speaker, and then a crafty turtle can be made with a crafting table. These devices can only take the diamond tier tools, and that's how you upgrade them. So let's go ahead and make this a mining turtle. So if I go ahead and run a command, so Lua turtle dot dig down. As you can see, there's no tool to dig with. It doesn't know how. So I have to give it its tool. So if I go ahead and place it in its current selected slot, you can actually change the selected slot by, it goes by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So if I type in slash turtle select 16, it selects, sele oh, my bad, uh, 11. <laughs> You see, it's selected slot 11. Now, let's go ahead and go back to slot 1, and it's selected slot 1. Let's do turtle.equip, and we can select left or right. So I want it to be on this side. So I'm going to select, I'm going to put it on the right side. It's going by the way how the turtle is. So left, right. So let's put it on the right side. Now, as you can see, there it is. It's now on the right side. Hi, Fox. How you doing? Wait, you stole a bone? You're not a dog. What are you doing? Bad boy. So, as you can see, now as a tool, now I can run turtle.dig down. As you can see, it broke the block. I can also select the area and then turtle.place down. And there you go. To place it back down. Only thing right now is you're not able to um, place them in certain orientations unless you set up a system to do that. So the way how orientations work in Minecraft is if you place them like this, they place like that. But if you place them on the side of a block, it does that. So you'll have to do the same exact thing with the turtle. You'll have to place a block and then place it. So I can also run turtle.unequip or unequip. Uh, actually, I think I just run equip again. So we crew it right. Yep, there it is, and I gave it back. So oh, there we go. Let's actually go ahead and put that down and pickaxe back in. Oh, my bad. Oh, I'm not running on the right thing, am I? My bad. Go back to Minecraft. There we go. Uh, diamond pickaxe. Go and place that back in. There we go. Oh, also, the recipes are this. So let me go ahead and grab one of these. And as you can see, it takes stone, a piece of redstone dust, and then a glass pane. That makes one. Okay. And then the advanced computer, you can you can either upgrade your current computer and turn it into an advanced computer with just seven yeah seven gold or you can make it by scratch by doing seven gold redstone and then a glass pane the command computer has has a, um, a recipe but the command block does not so you're not able to make that in survival as you can see there you go recipes for that recipes for the phones same thing, instead it takes an apple. It's a hint to the apple company. Haha. <laughs> you got stone, and then a glass pane, then an apple. And then same with the advanced computer, the pocket computer. Either make it from scratch by doing the gold, or the gold and then the computer. And then with the turtles, it's iron, and then a regular computer, and then a chest. And then to upgrade, it's gold, and then advanced computer, and then a chest, and then the same over here. But it takes a gold block to update because it takes a, about a whole gold block to update to this, I believe. Oh no, see, it takes away two to make it even. Okay, and now the disk drives and printers.
So, the disk drive is a device that allows you to connect with other devices. So I'm going to quickly grab a computer, place it down, let's say right under, and now there, there should be a new section. So if I type in ls, that is the listing system, and that shows everything that is currently in the computer. So if I type in ls, nothing's going to happen. I have to go ahead and insert a disk. So I'm going to insert a, a red disk. You can either right click it and then just put it in, or you can hold shift and then right click with the disk. There you go. Now if I open up this and type in ls, you can see that a new section popped up called disk. If I type in disk, slash, and then a place, there is no such program because I didn't add anything onto that disk. So let's go ahead and make it a new program. So edit, test, no, edit disk slash test, and then save, and then now do ls, and then disk, it'll show everything on that disk. So see, there's test on there. If I, if I type in test, nothing's gonna happen. I have to type in disk slash test. But let's go ahead and edit that. You can also use the up arrow to go back to where you was, where you were, sorry. Let's type in print. And let's make the first ever code you make usually whenever you code. So, hello world. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit control S, control E, and now we saved it. So now if you look on the disk, this is disk zero. One thing you can also do with computer craft is you have access to the file system. So let me go ahead and open up this and type in ID. So this is computer ID 3. This is ID 3 in the whole world. So I can actually go ahead and go into my files, go into my game, uh, saves, creative testing, computer craft, and then computer, and then computer 3. As you can see, I can go into my files, and then you open up the code, and it's actually there. That was the code from earlier. Now I can actually go on to disk, disk zero. And as you can see, if I look in here, this is labeled disk ID zero. If I open up that, you can see our new code that we just made, hello world. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run it. Disk slash test. As you can see, it ran. You can edit all this code outside of the game. So I can actually do this. Print hello world. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to type in print hello world 2. Now I just saved it. And now if I run it again, you can see it added it to the file. So you were able to edit outside the game, which is awesome. Now, did I do that right? I did not. My bad, y'all. There we go. So it's 3. It's 2 to do that. Okay. So, this drive, it allows you to add more code and save them onto disks. If you want, you can cp disk slash test and then put it into your normal thing. So now I have it inside the computer instead of the disk. But since I cp'd it, which is copy, I also have it on the disk at the same time. Okay? So now let's go to the printer. So let me just go ahead and copy this. Get this back. Give me the computer. Mine. Yep. Go and put this back. And now onto the printer. So we need ink and paper. So I believe ink and then paper go there. And then now if I place down this computer, this is the same computer that I had right there. So I can actually go ahead and is there a print no um okay i think i have to hmm. i don't think advanced computers can print actually I might be able to so edit oh you see okay it, it actually shows up whenever the printer is located so if i type in print printer is out of ink oh Oh, it might be this. I might need to do that. Printer is out of ink. No, you're not. 
Not on the ink, you're lying to me. Wait, do I need to... Lua? Okay, so... I'm gonna go and teach you guys how to use peripherals in a bit and how they work. Which is, these two are peripherals right here, and then all, this whole section is peripherals, as you can see, peripherals, and this is all the devices. So what I need to do is I believe I need to, okay, so let me get the methods, so get methods of, okay, devices on the top. So get methods of top. Oh, they changed it. Okay, it's not ink sacks anymore. Sorry, it's dye. It uses black dye, I believe. And now if I run it, I'm going to go ahead and exit this. Edit. Redstone setter. And then run that. There we go, printed one page. Now if I look in here, it printed. And I can actually look at it. See? Alright, so let's set output. And then bottom, true. You can also combine these into a book. As you can see right here, printed pages. What you do is you get string and then you connect two pages and then it creates a printed page. Now if we go to printed book, you can combine it with a page and then leather. And then it will create a book that you can actually read. And you can actually have a whole bunch of different things. So, so I'm going to go ahead and put this back. So now we go to the displays. There are two different types of displays. There is the normal display and the advanced display. The normal display um, it does not show color, but the advanced display does. Advanced display also has the touch API. So you're able to t actually right click the screen to do certain functions. I believe that is true. Let me quickly do it. Let me quickly do a test for you guys. Let me go ahead and grab this. There we go. Uh, put that back. So now let's go ahead and Lua. Peripheral dot wrap. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the top computer, and I'm going to wrap it as mon. So if I type in mon dot write test. Now if I look on the screen, it says test. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do something else. I'm gonna do os dot pull event. Oh, well, my bad. OS dot pull event, which is this is basically finding an event to happen with the computer. So os dot pull event. I'm gonna go ahead and shut up that zombie again. There we go. OS dot pull event. Uh, monitor underscore touch and then if I run print hi now if I right click the screen up oh, you see the um uh, the normal computer does not have touch capabilities as you can see the normal uh, monitor my bad sorry so let me go ahead and grab this computer And now let's bring it to this. Oh, my bad. Let's go ahead and open up Lua. Okay, mon equals peripheral dot wrap top mon dot right test. There we go. Now we have the same text there. Now let's run os dot pull event monitor, monitor underscore touch print high. Now if I right click the screen, see? And now if I look, it says high because I touched the screen. Pull events also can grab the data. So if I go ahead and remove this print and then press enter, if I right click the screen, it will give me the data. So it'll give me the event. The event was the monitor touch. It was located on the top of the computer and then the location where it was pressed. So it was pressed on X4 and I think Y3. And then you could use that data to make buttons and right clickable messages, stuff like that. Over there, I have a whole bunch of examples and right after I get all this done, I'm gonna go and show you what all those do. So 
Also, there is networking. You can actually send signals over the network. You have a wireless modem, which can send over a small range. Let me see what that range is real quick. So the range, uh, let me see, where is it, where is it, I think it's in call. Mm, no. Actually, I think it's in my saves file. I think it's in here. Here it is. Uh, the range or maximum... Okay, here it is. So the range of wireless modems at a maximum altitude in clear weather is 384 blocks. During a storm, it goes down to 64. During a storm, and the altitude range is going to be the same. Uh, you can change this all right here. You can have it so it does certain things. Okay, good. Okay, and then the ender modem is infinite. It can also go to dimensions. The wireless modem is not infinite. It cannot go to dimensions. So that's the wireless modems. You can use them to contact two devices. I have also an example over there, so you can go ahead and see. So we have our networking with LAN modems. We have our block modem which is used to interface with like chests and stuff because you cannot place one of these on a chest. If I go and right click here, yep, see, can't place it. But you can place it if you do this. If I right click it, you can see Minecraft chest underscore zero has been connected. Now, if I go ahead and go to here, there's wires. These allow you to send the signal through the wire, okay? And then it can also go to a small modem. These modems can be used to connect with different devices throughout your world, depending on what you have. The pocket computers, however, cannot be connected via wired modems. They can only be connected via wireless. So you can make wireless pocket computers and, and send signals to different devices. So with the disk drive, you can make it with stone, and then two redstone, you got your disk drive, your printer, you can make with your stone, and then one redstone, and then any kind of die, okay? You have your monitors, you can make those with just stone, and then a glass pane. With this mod, you do need a lot of stone to make a lot of your things, so don't forget about that. With the advanced monitor, you have gold, and then one glass pane, you get four monitors from that recipe. But only one with this recipe. So you, you get a lot of bang out of your buck for that one. Your wireless modem does take an ender pearl, so stone and one ender pearl. Then your ender modem is gold and then one ender eye. Your modem block is just, all you do is just you put a normal modem in your, um, uh, in your crafting table, and then it will go. Your wired cable, which is networking cable, you do stone, and then one red stone, you get six. And then with your wired modem, you use stone, and then one red stone. You can also flip flop this for this just by putting it in your inventory, in your crafting table. Hi, Fox, how you doing? You like him sleeping? You got that bone? I know. Beauty. I also have my little, my little phone right here. Uh, I was going to use this in the spotlight to go ahead and show you how like certain things work. Like you can go ahead and add commands to that, but we're doing it over here, so. Yep. But as you can see, all of those. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how wireless modems work, how you can use peripherals and stuff. So let's get right into that. So uses and examples. So right here we have all of your uses, all of your like things you can do. You can use this mod for anything you want. So. Right here, I have a whole reactor. You see it's been made by me, by RC. You have a whole reactor. Right now, the reactor is shut off because it's at, I have it at a certain set point where it shuts off in the code. So let me go ahead and drain the reactor. 
by getting a... I'm just going to drain it by just putting a energy cube on it. There you go. Now it's draining. Now you see everything's updating. It just powered back on because it lost that area. I have your cell storage. I have it connected using this. It's connected to that cell storage. You can see it checks if it's active. Checks if it's some um, uh, connected. So if I break this, it actually says false. I have that set. I don't know what happened there, but as you can see, so yes, we have a reactor type reinforced. This is a reinforced reactor. I have all my power stats. Um, I don't know what's happening over here. Oh, there's a hi Fox. How you doing? Slash TP at E type equals Fox comma limit equals one comma sort equals nearest. To at S. There we go. Hi, Fox. How you doing? Well, the Foxy got stuck behind my door, so he started opening it. So, as you can see, we have our reactor. It does everything for us. It tells us how much storage we have. So, if I go and break this, see it starts counting up because it's getting the data from this. I also have it so this number changes color depending on how high the number is. We have our temperature, we have our fuel status, and everything. Okay. Now, our password protected door. If I go ahead and open up this, it asks for a password. So, who am I? I am RC. Access granted. So, if I'm not RC, so if I type in um, who am I, I am gay. Access denied, and then it fails, and you're not able to do that. I will show you guys how to make that also in upcoming videos. I'm going to go and show you guys. I'm going to start with basics of how things work, like how to connect to modems, how to do peripherals. We're about to do peripherals in a bit, so I'm going to go and make an area over there for that. Yep, we have a password protected door. It allows you to go in and out. I have a compressor that's powering a pneumatic door right there. And then one of my favorites is my remote controlled robot that I worked on. So I have a code running that asks me to look at the monitor, but then it says I'm uh, who made it. So remote control server by RC. If I go ahead and right click the start button, it's connecting, but then it fails. That's because it cannot find the robot because I did not activate the robot. Okay, you see this little black line on the side? If I right click this, a code runs and it activates it. So now it's red, so now it's activated. Now if I right click this, there we go, now it's connected. And now I can actually run any command. All right, so let me move forward. Up, up, uh, let's go left, forward, forward, down, down, dig forward, up, dig forward, right forward and and you get the gist you can um, uh you can run all of that so these are the examples and things that you could do now let's get into making some of this stuff some like something small like i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to make this i'm gonna go and show you how to make this password door for the first episode uh, that's what i'll do okay and now I can go ahead and restart this computer. And as you can see, it asks to start again. But right now it's already connected, so I can run start. And it just goes right in. Okay. What I have is I have this turtle searching for a signal that this computer will send whenever I click start. It sends out a signal, and it goes ahead and says, hey, are you alive? And if a signal doesn't get back, it says that it failed. Okay. So let's start with a password door. Oh, let me go ahead and get all the blocks. So I'm just going to grab that, that, uh, okay, that, 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 that. Um, I also need a camouflage so I can hide the thing. Because if I do this, oh wait, no, that it doesn't have power. If I do this, you can see that there's actually something there. See? Let me go ahead and get that again. So There we go. Hiding. Okay, let's go ahead and get this. Let's also go ahead and get a computer. There we go. And let's go ahead and 
go and make a, a door. Okay, so first we're making our door base. So now let's place our, there we go. And now if I just place a door, there we go. Okay, and now let's just hook up the tube. Place this. This runs on how much it is? It needs two or above. So one, two, one, two, three. There you go. Now it closed. Oh, it's being a little bit glitchy because it was still filling. So let's add the computer. Oh, uh, it's opening automatically because I didn't set this right. So iron door behavior, yes. Well, first I need to move then set the behavior there we go now it won't open so let's this is id 13 uh, i don't know why it's oh i know why it's it's trying to go for that computer i bet ls yeah uh let me go ahead and get a new computer because that is wrong There you go, 14. This should have nothing on it. Yes. Okay, ID 14. So let's go ahead and make a password door. Something simple. So let's go ahead and go into here. Okay, this is computer 14. So let's make a 14 file. And I'm going to call it lock.lua. So let's go ahead and do this. So first we need to clear the screen. So let's do... Let's do term dot clear. Um, I also have a an extension that allows me to have computer craft like code inside here. I will also have a link to this. So computer craft, as you can see. I will also link to that. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. If I go ahead and save that and then run lock. It clears the screen, but it does not put the cursor in the back. Let's go ahead and do that. So term dot set cursor position to one comma one, which will set position back to its original place. So now let's run it. And now it's been set back. So let's go ahead and run print. Actually, no, let's go ahead and do a write. Term dot write. Okay, the write function is different than print. Write allows stuff to be inputted right after it. So if I type in this, test, colon, and then run lock, you can see I actually have the thing pop up next to it instead of under it. So let's go ahead and write input password. And then this. Now we have to get input from the player. So now what we want to do is we want to run local. Okay, right now there's different um, scopes in ComputerCraft called local and global. To make a global variable, all you need to do is just put in the variable name equals and then blah. I, I will teach more of Lua, like more conditions, stuff like that, the if statement, loops, all that. But we're going to go ahead and just make a local. So local pw, no, actually let's do local input equals read, which that is the function that you need to read text. So let's do, okay, so now if I do that and run it, so lock, nope, not label, lock, input password and then I can actually type in something like hello world and you see it does nothing yet because I didn't set up anything for it to do okay so if input equals equals let's do a let's do uh, one two three four then print welcome smiley face then we need to do rs dot Output 
and we need to set where we want the output to be set. So this is the left side of the computer, I believe. Left side. So left colon true. And then we want it to sleep for 2.5 seconds. And then set it back to false. Okay. Now what it should do is if I type in lock and then type in one, two, three, five, which is not the password, it will fail. So let's type in lock one, two, three, four. Welcome. As you can see, it opens and then it closes after five seconds. Now we want a condition where if it fails. So if I type in else and I can go ahead and do this. Sorry, man, you're denied. And now I can just, if I want to, I can just OS dot shut down, which shuts down the computer. Now if I run lock and then one, two, three, four, see, opens and closes. Now if I do lock and type in one, two, three, five, it fails, but there's an issue there. You see that it did not put the text? That's because I shut down literally right after. So I need time for the person to see the text. So let me go ahead and sleep for one second after I import the text. So lock. One, two, three, four. Welcome. Lock. One, two, three, five. Sorry, man, you're denied. And then off. Also, as you can see, it boots into the normal directory. If you want it to automatically boot into the code that you run, you can either put it in a auto run folder. So I can actually go ahead and do this. We go ahead and make a new folder called auto run and then move it in here. So now it does nothing because I think I failed. Yes, I failed. Maybe it's called startup. There it goes, there we go. So as you can see, every single time I reboot the computer, it automatically goes back into the code. It does not go into the OS. So if I type in one, two, three, five, I basically just locked out my computer. No one can use my computer. One, two, three, four, if I do that, it says welcome, and then it goes into my stuff again. So it allows me to use my computer. So that means you can actually lock out computers to other people. So there you go, you just made a simple password door. So, one last thing is peripherals and how they work. So, ComputerCraft runs off a system called peripheral, which is basically what normal peripherals in the real world are. Peripherals are basically like keyboards, monitors, stuff like that. Things that are extra to the computer. So there's multiple types of peripherals. There's um, hmm, peripheral dot get names maybe. No, I think that's only if there's peripherals next to it. So let me actually go ahead and go back into the website. And let's go ahead and go to peripheral. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, I think it's down here actually. Yep, peripherals, here it is. So there's multiple types of different peripherals. So as you can see, there's, yeah, there's these types and there's these types. So peripherals are used to um, use different blocks to do certain things. Like a disk drive is a peripheral, a printer is peripheral, a monitor is, per is a peripheral, a turtle, another computer, the networking is all peripherals. Also, there's also storage peripherals that they literally, they just added recently. It allows you to control items into slots and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and quickly add a monitor peripheral. So as you've seen over there, if I go ahead and, oh, the monitors are also multi-block structures. So you can do this. 
and this will work as you can see so let me go ahead and so I can go ahead and wrap this peripheral so if we mon equals peripheral dot wrap um, right I believe I'm gonna type in mon dot I can type in right hello world smiley face enter and as you see hello world is at the top I can also do mon dot set cursor position one comma two which means it'll be on the uh, x1 y2 so that means now if I type in hello world it will show up under it instead of right next to it and oh sorry and that's a peripheral. It's a device that allows you to uh, get more functionality with your computer. Same with turtles and everything like that. But this has been a Computercraft Mod Spotlight. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I would love to answer them. But without further ado, you guys have a great one. This has been RC. Goodbye.